We Brits are a nation of compulsive collectors. Across the country, there are storage units crammed with clutter, <laughs> bulging barns, and jam-packed garages. Wow, you've got a lot of stuff, Dad. Home to dreams. I haven't seen that for so many years. Memories. So who did this belong to, then? And excess baggage. And we're drowning in it. You've got some stuff in here, haven't you? But among the debris and disorder... Heavens above. I've never seen so many rings. My mission is to uncover the stories. They were your grandmothers. Yeah. Find the hidden gems. There's a thousand pounds there. Crikey. Crikey. And turn the mess into money. 180, 190, 200. Our first stricken storer is Tricia Lord. Over the past year, she's run up a storage bill of nearly £800. Sister Jill thinks it all has to stop. So, what's hidden in this hoard? Ornaments, photo albums, books, miniatures, cars, teddy bears, clothes, records. Tricia lives in the Cambridgeshire Cathedral city of Peterborough and she's certainly harbouring no illusions as to what she is. I definitely would call myself a hoarder. It's a lot of years of accumulation and at the end of the day, it really is just stuff. Tricia's hoarding habit came to a head when she and her husband Dave downsized from a four-bedroom house to a two-bedroom bungalow. Once I decluttered my old house, I looked at my dining room and thought, I like this, I can see the room, but I don't want to reclutter this place. Trisha's doing her best to keep the clutter out of her new house. Only problem is it's all sitting in storage and costing her money. 27 years is a long time to spend in a house and presents that people have bought me and odd pieces that I've bought myself and or that Dave's bought me and they've just gradually filled the unit and filled the units and filled the units until there was no room to move. Sister Jill is worried that Trisha's storage is starting to cause more problems than it's solving. <laughs> it's niggling, I think, at the back of her mind all the time that it's there and it's a job that needs doing. Trisha's hoarding habit is in danger of spilling out of her unit and into her home. It's already invaded the garage. I don't want to reclutter this place with all the stuff that was in the house. Apart from the fact that I haven't got room for it, I haven't got the energy to dust it or look after it. Um, it doesn't have the same meaning now, I don't think. If there was something that was a little bit, well, shall I keep this or not, I would probably just look at her and pull her face and she'd say, no, perhaps not. OK, I'll tell you what, I don't know how you're going to manage this. Like. Overall, I think it really is time to um, get rid of it. And if this convinced collector does manage to clear out, what does she plan to do with the profits? There are some cine films and some of them are very old. I don't know what's on a lot of them. They might be childhood memories of Dave's. Um, a lot of them, and it would be nice to have those on DVD so that Dave can see them and enjoy them because he'd remember those. Can I persuade her to find a new home for her hoard and free up some much needed cash to unlock those cine film memories? So, you're looking forward to this? Yes and no. Yes and no. <laughs> How long has it been since you? Nearly a year. Right. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Right, I see. First glance reveals Tricia is definitely a hoarder, just a very neat yes. one. What's this? Oh, it's an old projector. Yes. How long have you had this for? It belonged to Dave's father. Oh, right. Um, and somewhere in there are some cine films, and I'd like to get them, if they're not damaged, onto DVD. Oh, right. Because there's cine film of our wedding. Of your wedding? What year yeah. was that? 1973. I'm just hoping that they're not damaged. Well, that's something worth hunting for, but not everything in this pile is quite so deserving of its place. Jill, can you take that? What's in it? It's shower stuff. Um, shower stuff? Yeah. Why do you have it in here, not at home? 
Because I've got too much at home. <laughs> oh, I see. So you're paying to store it. Yes. Miniatures. Oh, are these ornaments? No. What are they? Miniature alcohol. Oh, miniature alcohol. Yeah. Oh, I see. Maybe we'll have a wee dram at the end of the day if we get all yes. this done. With the size of this stash, I think we'll have earned it. Trisha's best bet is to get it all out so she can see just what and where everything is. Well, with all these big boxes of clothes and the furniture, I think we need some strong men to help us, don't I you? I think you're right. This is Mark Govinda Sami. He's spent an incredible £17,000 on storage over seven years, and he's still hoarding. Wife Susan thinks it's got to stop. So, how did this hoarding horror begin? I started storing things originally at home when I lived with my parents. Then when I moved out, I bought a purpose-built unit, stored it for there, there for seven years. And then when that started getting too expensive, I built my own unit on the farm and then just continued to store it on there. Mark lives in Curiously near Bolton, birthplace of famous comedian Peter Kay. But Mark's hoard is no laughing matter. He rented a commercial unit and clocked up thousands of pounds in just seven years. And when that got too expensive, he converted some stable blocks on his farm to hold his hoard. I've got too much clutter. I've been hoarding it for years. I need to clear it out. Mark is a ripe old age of 39, but his stash sounds like it belongs to a much younger man, or even boy. Most of it is what I've just collected over the years, uh, the stuff I've got in there from comics to old ornaments to just bits of things I've just thought well, might have been interesting and I've just ended up boxing them away, hiding them. Nobody can see them. <laughs> Susan, Mark's wife of 10 years, knows all about living with a grown-up hoarder who never grew out of his childhood collecting. He still, even to this day, brings the boy through his manhood because I know all about his ties, the big ties, the small ties, all of these things are what makes him the person that he is. And I wouldn't change him, but I do want him to get rid of the clutter. But she's worried those childhood attachments might just be too much for Mark. It might touch a nerve, or there might be things that you can't possibly get rid of. I'm going to be really, really strong and help him to be as strong as possible as well. But it's not just toys and comics that Mark has been hoarding. One of the most difficult things to get rid of as my friends will probably know, is my old bedroom door. And I've had that from being a little kid. And when I left the old house where I lived with my parents, I took it off its hinges and took it with me. <laughs> and I've still got it. So will it be hard for the storage Peter Pan to say goodbye to his boyish days? At one stage, they meant a lot to me. And that's why I hoarded them, because I thought at the time, yeah, I'll keep that. I'll One day I'll get round to doing this with it, or one day I'll get round to doing that with it. But then they become less important. With any money he makes from shifting his storage, Mark has his eye on a dream journey. If I do make any money out of this, then I will put the money towards the bodywork on my old 1971 Pontiac. That's where it'll go. Can Mark be persuaded to clear out his collection of man toys? I've sent antiques and collectibles expert Paul Hayes along to Bolton to give Mark and Susan a helping hand. It's time to step up and clear out. So what are you keeping here then, Mark? Uh, probably everything I've probably had in my life, to be honest. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> it could be anything, toys, games, who knows, right. anything. Well, I'll tell you what we need to do. We need to get in there and have a good look and see exactly what is in there. OK. Sort out a few things and, uh, uh have you got the key? Yeah, I can oh, do right. the honours. Oh, well done. Let's just have a go. Right. Opening the door reveals a nightmarish version of a teenage boy's bedroom. Right. I've seen about seven years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm only joking. I'll give you a let's get in there and see what it is. Oh, look at that. Who knows what could be hiding under this stuff? It's a radio control one. Is it? Yeah, yeah. I had a couple of them as a kid. Well, the bolt's there. The box isn't. It looks like I've had a little mouse infestation, perhaps. Oh. It's my old school bag. Oh. And I think in it is... Your old school finals. My old school stuff. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, isn't it? when I left last year. <laughs> 23 year old homework. Oh dear, Mark, see me after school. There's a lifetime's clutter in here, and the sooner they can get it all out, the better. Okay. Uh, so I think what we need to do is to get the team in. Yep. And get cracking and get all this outside. Yeah. And then uh, see what we've got. There. Have a proper route. All right, I'll go and get them. All right, okay. They'll be there on a cup of tea somewhere. <laughs> you know, right. right, guys, come on. 
That'll give them a chance to see exactly what they've got. Coming up, it's a decluttering masterclass for Tricia. So hold on, we're building up a nice little keep pile. Susan's already getting tough with Mark. You've had it years, you've seen it, you've had the use out of it. And Tricia gets a glimpse of yesteryear. Well, there you are. Wow. <laughs> We've been helping two hapless hoarders. Earlier, we met downsizer Tricia, who squeezed the overspill of a four-bedroomed house into her storage unit. Miniatures. Oh, are these ornaments? No, miniature alcohol. Ooh! And toy bath Mark, who has a stable filled with his childhood memories. My old school bag. Oh. And I think in it is... Your old school files. My old school stuff. Our hoarders need some help, so I've assigned some areas. Keep is for items they can't do without. Sell is for the stuff of value they don't want. Skip for the stuff they should tip or recycle. And charity for objects that will benefit a good cause. Later, our antiques experts will sift through their storage to find items of value. But first, I've brought in some hard help to move their boxes to a bigger space. With everything finally out of the unit, it's a chance to see exactly what they've got. Trisha's hoard reveals what looks like 27 years of careful collecting. While Mark's hall gives a glimpse of the boy hiding inside the man. Time for the sisters to get down to work. Oh, heck. <laughs> oh, um... Where would you like to start? <laughs> I don't know. Clearly, it's not going to be easy. It just looks so much more spread out like this than it did in a nice, compact unit. <laughs> it looks sort of it's... like when I was moving house. Yeah. That oh, actually yeah. spreads out, so it becomes that five... Year... Do you remember it? Yes. We only went in for one little ornament, spent about 70 or 80 odd quid each. So that's one keep already, and yes, Trisha's now uh, putting more just... stuff aside for next Christmas. We've got enough Christmas wrapping here for the next long number of years, so yeah. we might as well hang on to it. So we'll put those in the keep pile. Yeah. Oh, candles. Candles. Keep. The candles will have to keep. I'm not sure these two have got the hang of this. I think it's time I lent them a hand. Ladies! Were Hello. you storing your stuff in the TARDIS? I think Look so. Look at it! Well, hold on. We're building up a nice little keep pile. And not a very... What about a the... big flower vase in the charity? OK. So at the moment it's like one seven, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> yes. I think we need to start kind of... Skipping. Changing that a little mm. bit. Not necessarily skipping. It's not long before the main theme of Trisha's haul becomes clear. Trish, are you a great lover of ornaments? I always have been, but I've now decided I'm not going to be. Ooh! Love it! <laughs> love it! Oh, that's my Japanese figure. My daughter bought me that from Japan. Ah, when no. she was 18. OK. Are we going to have a problem here with this? I like the Japanese figure, but I haven't got room for the Japanese okay. figure. Fine. So we'll put this in the cell pile, yes. shall we? That's more like it. Nice. Now we're making progress. What is it about you and ornaments? I've never seen so many, you know, owned by one person. You should go and see Joe's house. It's, it's ornamental disease, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but not everything in this hoard is purely ornamental. And in among the dust collectors, there's an item with real meaning for Tricia and her husband, Dave. So what do we have in here, then? Um, cine films, old cine films. Ooh, what sort of cine films? Um, I don't know what's on those reels at all, mm. um, but I do know that somewhere in there are films of Dave and I and our wedding. Really? Yeah. So it seems such a shame to have all these memories locked in this box. I know. And nobody can see them. No, I'm hoping that those films aren't damaged and that we can get them transferred on to... DVD, mm -hmm. so that we would be able to see them. I don't know what's there, I, I really don't. Mm -hmm. um, some of them must be very old. This is a real opportunity to unlock some precious memories. So I've sent Tricia and Jill to London Soho, traditional home of the British film industry, to meet John Gray and Steve McGowan. These guys work on some of the biggest movies and adverts around. I've got some old cine film. There's one of my wedding from 1973 that I'd like you to have a look at. OK. I had forgotten they were there originally, but I would like to um, be able to see them on a big screen... Absolutely. Um, ..again. 
Did you have a, a red rose bouquet? Yes, I did. Well, there you are. Wow. <laughs> Bring back the memories already. Yes. Cine film or 8mm has been around since 1932. In 1965, Kodak introduced Super 8, making the sprocket holes small and increasing the frame size. This revolutionised the home filmmaking market and was a hugely popular format until the advent of video camcorders in the 80s. Many people, like Tricia, have treasured memories locked away on Super 8, so an industry has sprung up to transfer those images onto video and now DVD. So, for one of these 50 feet reels, you're looking yep. at around 22 to 25 pounds right. to digitise it into something like a QuickTime movie yeah. or a DVD. How did you yeah. want us to proceed with this? I think the wedding ones, um, it would be nice if those went on to DVD mm -hmm. now, um, and then the others will identify what they all are and put them in order of priority for putting on to um, DVD. It's been a real trip down memory lane for Tricia. I'm sure we'll both sit down and enjoy it and have a laugh over it and recollect things that happened all those years ago. So, yes, it will be good for him. That's great news for Tricia and Dave. And if Tricia can find some more items to sell at auction, she'll be well on the way to getting all her old films transferred. Mark, however, is battling with a very different trip down the time tunnel. Oh, my God. <laughs> what we're going to do with it all? <laughs> He's like a kid in a toy shop again. What do you want to do with these? Uh, Pressed ones. No, actually, not at the moment. Well, that's not a good start, is it, Mark? No. I think that would probably just be handy going to the charity shop. Just do you want to sell it or charity? Charity, okay. <laughs> One thing we made a decision on. Skateboard. Keep that can go over there. You don't need to keep it. You've, you've had it years, you've seen it, you've had the use out of it. Good work, Susan. And before Mark decides to put everything back in store, I think it's time for Paul to get stuck in. Ah, uh, now the new lot. All right. <laughs> Do you know what? I saw something shaped like this. In, in, is that what it is, a toilet? It's a it is a toilet, It certainly yeah. is. Yeah. There you go, yeah. look at that. So, so whose house did this come from? Some guy was renovating a house and right. this was chucked out. So my right. dad said he'll grow some strawberries in it. <laughs> <laughs> but my, my nan said, if you grow strawberries in there, I'll, be, I'll never be eating them, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I absolutely well. refused. Uh, well, these can be very desirable things, uh -huh. but, yeah. but like all ceramic items, they have to be in good nick. Can you see that at the bottom there as well? That looks like a repaired area here as well. Can you uh, see yeah. that? Yeah. Now, that's obviously going to fit, but look at the beautiful work. It's fantastic, yeah, isn't it? it is. As well as a vintage loo, Paul's hit on an item that should smooth out any problems in Mark's hoard. No, there we are. That's, a, that's definitely an antique. There we go. Well, <laughs> Didn't you use that yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think so with all the cobwebs in there. I Can you imagine that? Absolutely never been used in years, has it? No. I mean, I think you would put your coal in there, would you? That's exactly right. You'd you put, put your coal in there. You put your hot coals will go in there. Yep. Yeah. And uh, you could carry on ironing all night if you think about right. it, because you, as long right. as you had your fire going, you could use it as, right. as often as you oh, want. Right. Oh, yeah, because you'd have it by the side of your, your fire yeah. where yeah. your coals were. Yeah. Exactly, yes. That's probably the last iron I ever used, probably, to be honest. I've never <laughs> ironed since. I don't think you've ever, <laughs> I think you've ever used the iron. I'm not joking. I don't think you've ever used the iron in a previous life. <laughs> Never use an iron. No. But, well, do you know what, though? People love to see how technology develops. Yeah. And this is, you know, it's environmentally friendly, if you think about it. It's oh, recycling, yeah. it's yeah. using what's, yeah. what's around you. And it's a great thing to have. I mean, they took a long time to heat up, but once yeah. they were hot, yeah. so they're very, very, very useful yeah. items indeed. Yeah. So, so what do you want to do with this, then? Do you want I think to keep we'll it? put that in the cell pile. Yeah, okay. I think we'll sell that. Pile. Great, yeah. OK. Yeah. But not all Mark's collectibles are quite so ancient. We've got a whole collection of the 2080. Look, that's the 30th. Anniversary one. Wow, look. Not been See, opened. I know, it's even got something free with it. Yeah. I think you should sell those. Yeah, you know? they're all being sold. Yeah. I'll sell them all. Sell they won't them. get ruined yeah. if I keep them. Both hoarders have so much stuff that it's heads down if we want to decide what's worth going to auction. I think it's just, I've had him an awfully long while, and I just think he's very, very pretty. Time for Tricia to start listening to her sister. Pretty ugly. Yeah. Pretty? Period? No. That's more like it. Is this charity, Trish? This what is it? Charity. Charity. Okay. Susan's doing her part with the growing skip pile. The history of torture. <laughs> oh. And she's found another blast from Mark's past. Your looks have changed, though. You look like Peter Andre on there, with considerably more hair. <laughs> <laughs> 
But there's one item Paul's come across that should open a door onto Mark's collecting. So come on then, Mark. Susan, come on. It's, uh, it's crunch time now. What is going to happen with this door? What are you going to do with this door? Well, tell me, what, you know, why have you kept it all this time? I don't know. It's just got so much sentimental value. It ended up on a bonfire once. Uh, I put it there because I thought, right, I finally got rid of it. And then I was driving home and I rang my friend and uh, I told him that I put my door on, the, on this bonfire. And he said, no, no, you can't get rid of it. You can't get rid of it. Go back. So I ended up turning round, going and getting it off the fire before it was lit. Now, if you didn't, didn't have this wonderful sort of storage place here and you had to put that in the house, how would you feel about it, Susan? How would you like that in your middle of your kitchen? <laughs> One look Speechless. says it all. <laughs> Well, in terms of value, obviously, if that came up for auction, I think yeah, the auctioneer yeah. would be ringing me up and saying, what have you done sending me this door? Uh, so there's no commercial value whatsoever. Yeah. But I can see it's of enormous personal <laughs> value is. to yourself. So that's fine. Looks like Mark's not parting with some of his past just yet. But the doors are definitely closing for our hoarders. Both pairs have managed to sort their items into keep, skip and sell piles. Trisha's keep pile is worryingly large and she's not exactly been ruthless with the skip pile. While Mark's huge skip pile looks like it's actually come from a skip. But then, so does his equally large charity pile. But more importantly, is there anything of value hidden away in their cell piles? Coming up, has Tricia struck gold? This is maybe halfway between a coin and a bullion bar. And her collection of ornaments goes under the hammer. Happy with that? Good. Oh. Welcome back to Storage Hoarders, where I'm helping to sort through surplus stuff and unlock the key to a clutter-free future. Earlier, we met Tricia, who has downsized her house but upsized her storage. And Mark, who's been hanging on to stuff since he was a boy. Now it's time to see if there's anything of value hiding away in their hoards. I've asked antiques expert Tom Keane, veteran of more than 20 years in the trade, to take a look through Trisha's items. So what's his take on this collection of collectibles? Looking around this room, <laughs> you must have spent thousands of thousands of pounds buying all these things. I haven't bought all of them. Some of them were presents. Whereas what we're looking at here is the last few years of Royal Dalton in production and Royal Worcester in this country. In the last decade, most of these factories have moved to the Far East, yeah. don't produce her anymore. I don't think it'll be long before people really suss it out that the things made in England are more collectible than the things made in China, so the yeah. market might start picking up again. Let's start with the Dalton figures. A little dealer's tip for you. When you're buying these things, that little Roll Dalton insignia there... Yeah. Always run your finger across it just there. In the factory, if it's a second, they chip the centre out of that. Oh. So it's only worth a third of the original price. So it's a, it's a good thing to do if you're going to buy these sorts of things. Just make sure you're not getting uh, ripped off or making mistakes. Right. Ooh. Now, you've got some good factories here, Royal Worcester. <coughs> this is the, uh, a real classical pattern. What does that say upside down? Foxglove. Foxglove. Name of the flowers. Mm. So this pattern came into existence in the early 19th century. Mm. Mm. They're still reproducing it now. This is, these are fairly modern, these, but uh, in the traditional style. Do you remember what you paid? No, I don't remember what I paid. Probably best. <laughs> I think they're about <laughs> 35 £40 a cup and saucer. Go and buy retail. You can put them into an auction. They should make £25, £30 or two. Now, you've got some Wedgwood glass mm. paperweights. Yes. Wedgwood weren't as successful with the glass as what they were the pottery, so yeah. it's... Uh, uh, they're not too valuable, but even so, I'd expect to get 10 to 15 pounds each for those. Mm. Six of those, 60 to 90 pounds. Now you've got some basic figures. Mm. Two, four, six of those. Why only six? They bought out a set of six, and then about 12 months later, they bought out another set of six. And I realised too late that they bought out the second set, and I couldn't get them. They were sold out. It's amazing how quick the markets react. The first set are trading around about 30, 35 pounds each. Mrs. Dingle in the second set is 150 pounds. Mm. And something else, they're, they're much more collectible than the second lot. They're, they're a good set, I think they're very, very collectible. And I think if you put them to auction, 150 quid there. Mm. I'll look through the boxes. Diminutive drinks sets. Mm. How many have you got? Half a dozen or so, I should think. And the bottles? Probably about a hundred. 
You've got to be looking at two or three hundred pounds for that lot easily. Oh. Overall, there's quite a few hundred pounds on this table. Yeah. There is, isn't there? Yeah. Are you pleased? I am, yes, because um, it'll mean that we can sort of carry on doing yeah. things for a bit longer, going yes. away for weekends, going out for a yeah. meal, etc. Yeah. yeah. With some sisterly support from Jill, Trisha's done a fine job sorting through her hoard. And Tom's found some great stuff to take to auction. There's the Royal Worcester tea set, which Thomas estimated at 25 to 30 pounds. The set of wedge with glass paperweights, which Thomas valued at 60 to 90 pounds. And the selection of miniatures valued at two to 300 pounds. Plus there's a set of Besic figures with an estimate of 150 to 250 pounds. Tom has also identified some Royal Worcester figures with an estimate of 30 to 40 pounds and some Royal Dilton character figures valued at 60 to 100 pounds. That's a great haul to take to auction, but there's one item that demands closer inspection. An American one ounce, $50 piece, pure gold. Mm. Where did you get this from? It's um, a friend of my daughter. She met an American on a cruise and he came over and stayed in the UK and mm -hmm. he stayed with us for a few weeks mm -hmm. and he brought that with him as a gift. Let's take it to a specialist and see what he's got to say. Yes. Yeah, and then we'll, yeah. Well, then we'll find out more information and then you can be a judge after that. Yes. To find out more about this golden gift, I've sent Tricia, Jill and Tom to London to meet Philip Cohen, who has been trading in rare and precious coins since 1978. You have a one ounce gold coin and this kind of item is based, is priced purely on its intrinsic gold value. Right. All right. And it says on it quite clearly what it is. One ounce, fine gold, $50. It's written on it, so there's no doubt about it. Issued by the United States government. And this kind of item fills a role, slightly different from old coinage, which was yeah. used to be circulated, spent in everyday change, or maybe as a store of value. This is maybe halfway between a coin and a bullion bar. Various countries issue gold bullion coins like Trisha's. The UK has the Britannia, there's the American Eagle, and the South African Krugerrand. Coins like these are designed as investment or trading items, as the amount of gold in them is guaranteed. The coin's face value is usually far below their gold value. The most expensive coin ever struck was a million dollar gold coin by the Royal Canadian Mint. It sold at auction for four million dollars. When this was given to you, so we've had 1996, maybe? 90, somewhere I, around you know, Mid, I, it's in the 1990s. Yeah, it would yeah. have been in the early That's 90s, right, I think, yeah. yes. The value would have been closer to 200 pounds. So things have moved on quite a bit mm. since then, quite a bit, yeah. So it was still a very generous present. It was a very generous then. present, yeah. yeah. Trisha's hung on to her gift out of sentiment. But after all these years, is her dollar a pretty penny or just fool's gold? I mean, I've already checked the gold price today. The spot value, this is the melt value of the metal, is, is £880. Oh. Now, I'm not going to pay that, <laughs> but I'd pay close to that. Mm. There needs to be that trading margin. Yes. 850 would be my buying price. Um, that's a very good offer. Um, although I'm very tempted, I think... I'm going to hang on mm -hmm. to it. Well, that's one high-value investment that has low impact on Trisha's hoard. It's a little nest egg, I suppose, for several years from now, and uh, I can then sell it um, or pass it down to my children. The golden dollar is staying in her pocket, but the moment of truth has finally arrived for Trisha's collection of ornaments as they go under the hammer at the auction. So, Trish, I'm glad to see you've brought a few of your many hundred ornaments to auction today. I have, yes. <laughs> was that a difficult decision to make? At the end of the day, no, I don't think it was. I think they've been in storage for so long. I've had them for a lot of years. I haven't got room for them. So they had to go. Yes. It's as simple as that. Good for yeah. you. Jo, what do you think about what Trish is doing here? Well, I think at the end of the day, it's going to help her. It's cleared the storage unit and whatever happens today hopefully she'll come out better off um, yes. as, a, as a result of it. How much are you hoping to walk away with today? I haven't really thought about it to be honest. Oh. Something, anything. anything? Yeah. <laughs>
Before the bidding commences, there's just time to hear what auctioneer Matthew Caddick thinks of Tricia's items. In amongst the porcelain, there are six Wedgwood glass paperweights. People do collect these, and they're quite quirky, these collectors, so um, interesting item. There's no reserve on this lot, so they're doing it all the right way. They're attractively estimating them. There's no reserve, so they ought to sell for us today. These miniature drinks that are being offered, um, I don't really have the confidence to say I think they're going to sell well. I think probably they'll struggle. I'd love to be proven wrong, but let's just see what happens. First under the hammer are the basic figures, valued at 150 to 250 pounds. There are six in this lot, and um, 150 pounds start me. 140, then no less. I can't take a penny less than 140 pounds. Somebody bid me 140, I shall move on. No bids at 140, then are we all done? Are we sure? 140, no, no bids. Oh dear, the basic figures don't make the reserve of 140 pounds. Next are the Royal Dalton character figures, valued at 60 to 100. Let's hope they do better. What should we say on these? Start me 60 pounds for these. 60 pounds for them. 50 pounds for them. No bids of 50 pounds. I'm going to pass this lot. No interest of 50 pounds then. Not sold again. It's not a good start. So let's hope the Royal Worcester Queen Elizabeth figure, valued at 30 to 40 pounds, can get us back in the money. 10 pounds on bid. 12 there. 15. At £12 at the back of the room, take 15 now. At £12 only. At £12, all done and selling 12. Only £12, but at least we're back on track. The Royal Worcester tea set, valued at 25 to £30, sells for £12 as well. Next are those Wedgwood paperweights, valued at 60 to £90. £40 on bid, thank you, and five I'll take. I think it's cheap at £40, take five now. Is that it? At £40 to my left at £40. I'm going to sell them then. Are we all done all out? 40? 40 pounds, one, yes. two. What do you reckon? Well, mm. they're gone. They're gone. <laughs> Finally, it's that collection of miniatures valued at two to 300 pounds. Trish has added a reserve of 200 pounds for this item. 150, I'll take 160 now at 150 pounds. Take 160. At 150 pounds, not quite enough. The very last minute. 150. Are we all done it all out? Not sold at 150 pounds, although it is a bid. To sell them for 150. Yeah, you would. Know. Right. Got to nail that man afterwards. Right. Just short of the reserve, but Tricia was later able to make a deal with the bidder for £150. I'll drink to that. So that was quite a result on the miniatures in the end. Yes. Did you think, actually, I really do want to get rid of these? Yes. I mean, that, there's an awful lot of weight and, yes. and space taken up with those. There were an awful lot of them. Yes. Um, and. At the end of the day, £150 is £150. Exactly. Um, yes, I'm quite happy with that. How do you think the day went today? I think it was very good. Uh huh. Um, I mean, Trish is now a few hundred pounds better off than yes. she was. Yes. And the stuff is no longer in storage. Exactly. So that's two big pluses. Trisha has sold four items at auction, including the miniatures for £150 and the Wedgwood paperweights at £40. After commission, she's made £197 and is well on the way to clearing out the rest of her unit. Now, your storage unit, mm -hmm. you still have it, is that right? Yes. Uh huh. So, what's your plan there? Um, the plan is to contact someone to get them to sell on my behalf. Uh huh. Um, so I'm hoping to only have the storage unit for perhaps mm -hmm. another three months mm -hmm. and then it will be empty. I'm going to probably get some of the cine films transferred to uh, um, right. DVD with the money. So my wedding yeah. is definitely on one of those because we saw it. That's great. Yeah. It's been a struggle for Tricia, but she's won the battle to keep the clutter out of her new house and is well on the way to getting those wedding memories onto DVD. Still to come, does the computer say no for Mark? Unbelievable. That is unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> and his childhood hoard comes up for auction. We've been getting to grips with the cluttered collections of two hoarders. Earlier, we met downsizing Tricia. Were you storing your stuff in the TARDIS? Who managed to make nearly £200 at auction. Now it's time to catch up with Mark, who's been hanging on to his childhood memories for far too long. I've called in collectibles expert Paul Hayes to have a sort through Mark's stash and help him solve his storage problem once and for all. So, what's he found? 
so you've got hundreds of 2000 and AD comics. Now, are these yours, Susan? Uh, definitely not. <laughs> Have you ever read one? Uh, no. No? <laughs> OK, so have you read all of these? Yeah, they've all oh. been read, yeah. And what years are we looking here? Because um, from about the mid-80s to sort of 2007, maybe 2008. Right. Uh, they started out in 77. Yeah. A uh, British comic, um, very collectible. They went on to make the Judge Dredd movies yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so, value-wise for that lot, I think you're approaching £100 there. Right. And I think somebody at the auction could, if you get two people who fancy them, you could do all right with them. Yeah. All yeah. right? And then 20 to 40 items, if not a lot more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, have, uh, we have these these dinky toys here. Yeah. So you've got some James Bond, you've got a Corgi yeah. there. There's also some Matchbox little yeah. ones that used to come in a Matchbox. Uh, That's you know, it, quite yeah. Clever. yeah. But there's definitely an interest in these. I mean, this sort of retro look, uh, people love to see it, you know, and they are getting a bit like classic cars. People yeah. have to uh, respray them, yeah. uh, put wide wheels on them, you know, <laughs> <laughs> go faster strikes. Yeah. Wow. Oh, uh, so those are going to be sort of 50 to 80 pounds yeah. as a lot. You know, there's a good three, three or four boxes there. Yeah. yeah. And then we've got this clarinet now. You, you said your father was musical. Is that something that he used as clarinet? It on? was actually mine, that. Oh, was that it was really? mine, yeah. What I love about it is it has a... It's original box, you know, this beautiful green uh, sort of lined box, and then all the the indentations fit the part, so it's all complete. Yeah. And then you've got a great maker's mark there. Look at that big and hooks. You know, it's in great condition. Yeah. That's you know sort of thirty to sixty pounds. Right. That okay. Particular. Is that all right with you? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yes. All right. Okay. All right. Now we have some Victoriana. Yeah. You know, it's a very decorative loo. Um, you know, they, they would have belonged in quite an, a, a posh house in its day, yeah. if you like. And for that reason, they are highly collected and, yeah. and in good condition. They can fetch quite a lot of money. Yeah. What you've got to allow with any ceramic item is the, is the damage. You yeah. Know. Sure. It can be repaired, but it's always a damaged sure. item. Yeah. Uh, so I think if I was being realistic, uh, I'd like to put that in between 30 and 50 pounds. Yeah. Okay. And I know they're a lot more expensive when they're perfect, but if someone takes a shine to it and is willing to have it restored, yeah. then maybe you might do this better. Yeah. Mark has worked hard to clear out stuff he's been hanging on to all his life, and Paula selected some really interesting items to take to auction. There's the collection of 2000 AD comics, valued at 60 to 100 pounds. The collection of toy cars, valued at 50 to 80 pounds. The Boozy and Hawks clarinet, which Paul has valued at 30 to 60 pounds. And the ornate toilet bowl, which is valued at 30 to 50 pounds. Paul's also identified a collection of royal memorabilia, which is valued at 20 to 40 pounds. And a Chinese cast iron laundry iron, valued at 15 to 20 pounds. But there's one special collection that needs a little more investigation. So we come on to the boys' toys yeah. now. You've got um, a ZX Spectrum, which I think was 82. That was yeah. the rubber button type. That's it. And then this one's about the same time, if not just a little bit later. Yeah, yeah. And the gameplay was really good on that. That's right, yeah. It? And talking of games, you've got lots of games. Lots, yeah, as well. for both, yeah. They're, they're a good lot, and I think what we need to do is to find someone who specialises in that. And I think uh, that's th the best way to sell it, really. These are real cult and collectible items, so I've sent Mark off to see Andrew Waring. He's been selling computers and games since 1996, but has been a games collector since he was a kid. So this is the Commodore 128 that you brought us. Yep, to yeah, it today. is. Fantastic. Yep. Am I right in saying you've not uh, had this operating or booted up for 20 huh. years? Yeah, probably, probably something like that. Maybe right. more. Maybe probably more. more. Yeah, well, yeah. Right. Okay. Well, let's have a see. See yep. what happens when we, yeah, let's uh, have when a we go. boot it up, eh? Here we go. Unbelievable. That is unbelievable, isn't it? That, that, <laughs> that is, is absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. Is, yeah. I am so happy. That is fantastic. Yeah. Very powerful for the time. The first of the kind, really, to yeah. uh, be home computers that uh, children can do homework on. Yeah. But then <laughs> they progressed mainly to uh, playing the games on the, they, they became games machines, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Kids, you know what kids are like, they'd, they'd rather play games and, uh, <laughs> and the do same? the homework. So, uh, my favourite computer, the ZX Spectrum, eh? Yep. Let's have a look at this beauty. Wow, that's nicely boxed. Very nice. Well, if this is in fully working condition, yep. um, it's going to be worth approximately 50 to 60 pound right, just on its okay. own, yeah? Shall we plug it in and let's have a look, see if it works? Let's give it a whirl after 25 years, yeah? Brilliant, yeah. yeah. Let's give it a go, eh? 
Vintage computers and computer games can command high prices. The Apple One, the great-great-grandfather of the iPad, recently sold at Christie's for £216,000. They're popular with collectors into 80s nostalgia, but they're also a hit with technophiles in the computer industry. So, is it game over for Mark, or has he hit the high score? I really like it all, yep. so I'd like to uh, strike a deal if that's okay. Okay, yeah, yeah sounds good, sounds good. Um, the price I'm thinking roughly yep. is around £140 for everything. Yep. Are, we, are we around the same I think we're in the, the right ballpark there, yeah. Yeah. we're in yeah. the right area. What, so, what? Uh, I don't know, if you, if you call it £150 for the, for the whole lot, then yeah. I think we'll do it. Yeah, I think that's fine, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that, yeah. Brilliant, Cheers, mate. Thank Cheers, you. thanks, Andy. So, I've had a great day in there with Andy. Um, he knows so much, so much. He's got the same passion as I have about the old 1980s computers. Um, he made a deal. We threw 140 pounds at me. Um, I just upped it a little bit and just managed to just grab 150 out of him, which I was really happy about. Well, that's a smart digital deal. <laughs> Next stop for Mark is the auction house in London, where it's hammer time for the rest of his stash. So you've brought quite a few items to auction today. Yep, I have. And what's the lot that you're most excited about? To be honest, it's probably the comics, the 2080. Really? Yeah, I've been collecting them a long time. Mm -hmm. My mum used to buy it. Well, my nan used to buy it for yeah. me. Then my mum used to buy it uh -huh. for me. Mm -hmm. And now it's just taken up so much space. They need to go to a good home. Were you surprised at how much your computers and games raised? Yeah, I was actually, yeah, because um, to be honest, I didn't think anybody would have any interest in it. To be That's honest, amazing, it's just, isn't it? it is. Yeah. I thought it was only me who had any interest in it. One man's trash, another man's treasure. Yeah, well, or one man's trash, another man's trash. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, we've got lots to look forward to. Yep. Excitement. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Okay, thanks, yeah. fingers crossed. Yep, Good yeah, luck. Definitely. Speak to you later. All right, then. Thank you. With the auction about to begin, there's just time to hear what auctioneer Matthew Caddick thinks of Mark's Hall. Mark's items are a little less traditional than, than one would expect. There are collector's items there, like comics. As long as they're priced right, we should have buyers. There's a Boozy and Hawks uh, clarinet. Now, this is a fantastic maker, and instruments do tend to do OK in auction. I don't think it's very expensive on the estimates, so that ought to do well today. First up is that ornate toilet bowl Mark's been sitting on all these years that has an estimate of 30 to 50 pounds. Bit already at 30 pounds and 32 pounds, I'll take 35 in the room. At 32 pounds, 35 there, 38 and 40. You want me to £40 beats the commission of 42 is next. At £40 in the room then, all done and selling at £40, it's gone. £40. 40 pounds. That'll do nicely. That'll, Good. Good. That'll loo nicely. <laughs> <laughs> so it hasn't all been money down the pan after all. But the laundry iron, valued at £15 to £20, sells for only £8. And the collection of royal memorabilia, valued at £20 to £40, doesn't sell. So let's hope Mark's collection of toy cars valued at 50 to 80 pounds can get us on the road again. Stop me 30 pounds, there's a lot there for the money, isn't there? 30 pounds, start me. 20 pounds for them. 10 pounds, dare I ask, 10 pounds, no one wants to be 10 pounds, 10 pounds, I'm bidding 12, I'll take. It's for nothing at 10 pounds, take 12 now. I'm bid 10 pounds, it's a maiden bid, I'm gonna sell them 12 there, 15. At 15 pounds, you've got plenty to play with later on at 15 pounds, I'm done, 15. Oh, wow. 15, at least they're not taking up space. Eh? That's it, that's it. 15 pounds, a dinky price, but it all counts. Next is Mark's old clarinet, estimated at 30 to 60 pounds. 20 pounds for this, who's your hawk's clarinet? 20 pounds for it, 15 pounds for it. 15 Oops, pounds, 15. 20, 15. I'll take 20 there, 25, 30, 35. It's still ridiculously cheap at 30 pounds, my left take five now. At 30 pounds, are we all done at 30? Oh, five, oh, oh. thank you, thanks for shouting, 40. You've done enough. The shouts what scared him off. At £35, take 40 At uh, £35, and I think you've won it. 35 OK, 35 OK, that's good. That's yeah. higher than the estimate. £35. Music to my ears. Finally, it's that collection of cult comics, but with a reserve of £50. Is it like seeing all the comics up there? Yeah, it's getting usual, isn't it? Look at them all. <laughs> They're displayed them quite nice, aren't they? It's a lot for the money, isn't it? Start me £60 for them. £60, start me £50, then no less. It's a lot for the money at £50. Somebody bid me £50 or I have to pass it. No one likes these at £50, then are we done? I'll be out at 50 Just short of the reserve, but Mark was later able to make a deal with the bidder for £40. So how has the decluttering experience been for you? Um, well, very good for the mine, definitely. Yeah, 
um, because it's always there in in the back of my mind and it's just it just pecks away Mm. and now that it's been sorted freedom yeah yeah and a lightness isn't there yeah yeah i'm much happier it's one less thing for me to worry about i'll just start worrying about something else now instead (laughs) but you know so today at auction minus commission mark has made 126 pounds Add to this the computer sales at the specialist of £150 and that makes a total of £276. More importantly, he started the process of clearing out his childhood clutter. So the farm building now where you had all this stuff, how is it now? It's looking pretty clear. I mean, there are the odd one or two things there because I did sneak one or two items back in, but nothing serious. So this money that you've made, are you (laughs) going to do anything specific with that money? The idea was for the money to go towards, you know, the bodywork on this old American car I've got. Yeah. So um, it won't get it very far, like half a coat of paint, maybe. Maybe something, something like that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe or just the petrol to get it to the paint shop. Yes. <laughs> he may not be able to do up his car just yet, but Mark's well on the way to a storage-free future. I'm pleased to see our storage orders are finally decluttered and made a bit of cash along the way. Join me, Aggie McKenzie, next time on Storage Orders. <laughs>